Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Good evening, Barbadians and all who are hearing our voices. Um, let me thank you for joining us. And let me say that in this room, I have obviously a number of ministerial colleagues at the head table with me, the Honorable Attorney General, Dale Marshall, and the Honorable Minister of Health, the Honorable Jeffrey Bostick, um, Dr. Greenwich, who is our one of our consultants, economic advisors, who was seconded from um, Washington to work with us for the last two years, and I think Barbadians have gotten accustomed to his voice recently. Um, the COVID-19 czar, but I also have a number of other ministers in the audience, Minister of Labor, Minister um, Colin Jordan, Minister of, in the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Investment, Minister Cattle, Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Minister Strawn, and of course the Governor of the Central Bank. Um, more importantly, I also have with me the members and leaders of a number of unions. We've just come out of another one of many meetings this week, and I really want to start this evening by thanking all, not just my ministerial colleagues, not just the union leaders, but the members of the private sector who are not here, members of the public service who have worked um, continuously to get us to this point over the course of the last two weeks. It's really been a, a, a long journey trying to get a number of things correct. This evening, we've called this press conference to address two basic matters. One, to update you with where we are, with um, what we have come to call a national meeting term, but which you will now learn has a new acronym that has come as a result of what I call the genius of Barbadian ingenuity by us being able to take a plan and to make it better and stronger and fitter and more capable of meeting the needs of all Barbadians. And I want to thank formally the labor movement, um, Barbados Workers Union, National Union of Public Workers, Setu Saab, of course, um, the Barbados Police Association, the Barbados Union of Teachers, the Barbados Fire Service Association, the Barbados Air Traffic Control Association, the Barbados Association of Public Primary um, School Principals, um, and the Association of Secondary Principals, that's Aps and Baps. Um, <laughs> and I think I called the Barbados Union of Teachers already. The Barbados Nurses Association, the Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners, the Nurses Association and Aid Association of Barbados, and the sugar industry, um, CISA, which are the workers within the sugar industry. Um, and I want to thank everybody. I've listed them not because we've come to a final point of agreement, but because on this journey, we have been walking and working together to perfect something that will work for the country, that will work for the workers, that will work for ordinary Barbadians and credit unions who are interested in savings. And I think we have come up with something that can probably be described as a boss move that is a win-win. Um, you will hear from Dr. Greenwich that the acronym of the program is in fact BOSS because it is called the Barbados Optional Savings Scheme. The program is intended to be able to benefit as I said, the needs of government, which is that we need above the line to be able to recast some of our recurring expenditure and to put in place of it additional capital expenditure so that we can ha undertake aggressively a number of projects that will allow us to be able to increase the number of persons who are working in the country. As of today, um, we had 41,836 unemployment benefit claims. Um, I think I can say, if there is good news, it is that it is not increasing at the rate at which it was increasing before. If there is good news, it is that there are at least 500 persons who have gone back um, to their substantive work and not at the, um, not claiming the unemployment benefit anymore. 
Um, when we come to the second part of the press conference, I'll give you more details about the, what we've paid out, etc. But for this point in time, we believe that if we can repurpose close to $100 million of recurring expenditure to capital works, that there will be a greater multiplier effect that will allow more Barbadians to be able to work, whether it is in the construction of roads or water mains or buildings that are sick buildings being refurbished or schools that need to be repaired or whether it is in cleaning up the country from um, the sides of the road to the lots that you heard me speak about and the gullies, um, the beaches, um, derelict buildings, whether it is the <clears throat> digitization of government's records and we now have the loan for that as we told you and therefore the ability to execute a little quicker is something that we would want to have the ability to do or whether it is in retraining or whether it is in expanded agricultural production, um, being able to meet the public good needs of water and improve the quality and nature of our soils to be able to enhance food production. So those capital projects, we believe, will lead to additional jobs and employment. And therefore, it allows us to take an approach in this boss move, in the routing of really what is an optional national meeting turn. It's not compulsory, it's optional. Um, but the government's needs are met and the workers' needs are met. And the needs of anybody interested in saving, be they individuals or credit unions outside of the government or other institutions, insurance companies, banks, etc., cetera, um, their needs can be met. I do not believe that I can explain it as well to you as Dr. Greenwich, who has perfected the art of explaining complex matters in a way that my constituents can understand at the very basic level. Because first and foremost, um, and we're proud of him, he's a Bajan. And um, yesterday I had to say about another distinguished Barbadian who died, that he was Bajan by name and nature, because with a nickname like Brugadong, he would have to be a Bajan. Um, we haven't given Dr. Greenwich a nickname yet, but I'm sure we can find one by the end of this process. Dr. Greenwich? And for the members of the media um, and, and the others, I think he may be using an element of a presentation, so I'll just direct your attention to that. Thank you, Prime Minister. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As the Prime Minister indicated, I will just take you through the basic elements and give you an outline of the program, um, which we are calling the Barbados Optional Savings Scheme. Now, let me start out by indicating, as the Prime Minister have mentioned, alluded to, why now? Why do we do this right now? What's the motivation? So first, on one hand, prior to COVID, we were expect, we have a projection for what we expect to happen to the government revenues. And along came COVID and decimated government revenues, especially anything that relates or relies on tourism activity. And we projecting the economic team that we will lose probably close to 500 million, between 450, 450 million to 500 million in government revenues. And that's the current working scenario. It could be worse, but that's it. So on the revenue side, we're losing a considerable amount of revenues we're projected to lose. At the same time, government had responded to the COVID, by stepping up expenditure in key areas, particularly we've all familiar with the work done in terms of outfitting the various um, quarantine facilities, buying medical supplies, etc. And in the two speeches the Prime Minister would have presented in terms of budget speeches, you will have seen about $45 million put aside in a household survival program. I won't go through it there, there is there money put aside to help businesses survive through the COVID. And so we have repurposed, government repurposed expenditures in many areas to try to accommodate for the loss in revenues but while still keeping the economy at least going while we, try, we expect it to recover as the jobs and um, tourism come back. But given now the fact that you see the unemployment rising and jobs are increasing, this program is designed in order to help us further absorb some labor. 
the idea is to repurpose some expenditures from the current expenditure from the wage bill into capital that will help to push the capital program in key areas which includes, for example, improving the uh, grace to schools and roads work, environmental cleanup, sanitation programs, programs that we can bring forward in the capital side that do not directly relate to tourism, thereby mopping up some of the excess unemployment that is we currently seeing. So this program, the BOSS program, is designed to achieve two things. On one hand, it helps on the fiscal because, and not to get too technical now, but simply if our fiscal recorded as a cash, so whatever we pay as wages, if we can pay a portion of that in bonds, we save it and push that into capital, and capital expenditure, economic reasons suggest, investing in that grows the economy, at the same time we are stopping grow, um, 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 jobs. The other benefit, a dual purpose of this program is that you, you maintain employment in the public sector at the current pace as it is now. So you can repurpose, but without shedding jobs. So let me get into the program. Um, and just to give you just again an overview, it, the first truth is that there's no workers' salaries are not cut. So whatever worker net salary is after taxes and insurance and, and, and NIS is taken out, are taken out, it remains the same. So if the, but if the worker takes, needs to take home that amount, NAS must minus and taxes, that amount that goes in the bank account, the worker still gets the same amount. But this time we are saying we give you the majority in cash and the recorder above in the fiscal, and we give you a small portion, I will show you the amounts, say 10% in a bond. That I don't record as an expenditure, I record as debt. And therefore that extra space, I, we can then repurpose towards capital. And so the worker is getting the same amount. Now what about this bond? Is it attractive? The bond that we have come up with is a four-year bond, so the, you, it is four years. It pays an annual interest of 5%, which in this current environment here, regionally, internationally, is a very good interest rate. Um, most of our debt is in, re, in that region, 5%. It pays not only, you don't have to wait till five years, because it pays interest every six months. So the, you, the worker in, in, who is investing in the bond is receiving some income through the period. In addition, to even make it even more attractive, we have waived, we have waived the withholding tax on the interest earned. Usually if you invest in any instrument, put your money in bank or any shares or anything, you pay a withholding tax. That is also waived, so you don't have to worry about that. It's fully tradable because by design, this is an 18-month program. And the worker in month one, let's say we start in July, will have, say, 90% in cash and a 10% and a 10% of his salary in a bond. And in August, the same thing, that's two bonds. In September, same thing, three bonds. So at the end of an 18-month period, the worker has 18 bonds. So he can trade any piece he wants at any point in time. Sell bond, bond number two that he got earlier or bond number 10. Or, so it's fully tradable depending on the worker's needs. So, and indeed, because we've been working on the other side, the demand side, with the credit unions, insurance companies, financial institutions, and even general, any corporate, any person, individual, because the attractive nature we want to buy, we have a mechanism where they can express their interest via the central bank and rest down rate and mop up. So it's fully tradable. The other thing, and I just give you the broad overviews, is that just as we had the last debt restructuring, saving bonds were protected, they were not restructured, these bonds will carry that feature. These will be immune from restructuring. Now, just a quick, not that we expect that we will be restructuring again, because I must say, one, when we restructured the last um, debt, which was about 11, 12 billion, built into that was the fact that if we miss an external debt payment, if we miss two IMF or three IMF um, reviews, or if we had to restructure, all of that has to be paid back. And that's the amount of months, a, money, a large amount of savings that we will start to pay back. What happened? But more importantly, the fundamentals of the Barbados economy has not changed. They are fundamentally on track. We fixed the debt problem, the debt problem which was a high debt or a problem we found. That's a fundamental, which in economics sometimes are referred to as the four um, horsemen of the apocalypse. One, high debt, that is fixed. Debt is on a stable trajectory and downward. Two, reserves, which was almost absent. That apocalypse horseman has been fixed. We have a reserves close to above 20 weeks of import cover. 
And I still say we are about to go to the IMF board on the 3rd of June, and, after, and once that is approved, we will have another disbursement of 49 million under the normal program, US million, and at the same time, we get an additional nine, 90 million US dollars because of the COVID to help us respond to it. Many countries in Caribbean are also going on a different arrangement. So that gives another 140 million dollars in reserves in, on by the 3rd of June that will add to it. So we, 280 Barbados, thank you, Prime Minister. Uh -huh. I was quoting US. And that, so we fixed the reserve problem. Uh, we fixed the fiscal. Previous to the program, we had fiscal deficits averaging 7%. We are now running primary fiscal primary surplus, which means that our fiscal accounts in order. We pay down from one point, we had about $1.9 billion in arrears. And after setting it off into arrears, we have about $1.2 billion to work with. We now just north of south of 200 million so you pay down so the fiscal income so that is a third fundamental and now we've been working on growth so with the fundamentals in check it means we once we get over this covid period the economy and we prepare and we don't go and do something cr crazy then we'll be able to pick back up so there's no chance i don't want anybody to think that i'm saying we're going to restructure all right so those are the features of the bond now how it will work is that and i just put this table as an example to illustrate the amounts that come out of the salary to go into the bond. We are saying, first of all, we recognize that persons that are earning less income, the lower income, um, we like you to spend more of that income on their normal monthly um, ex expansion needs, and let you to have enough to save. So we're not going to put any, their amount we paid, full salary, in cash. However, they may opt in to say, give me, because of some reason I have a bit more change, maybe you are not in the stage you're paying mortgage, give me an extra $200 of my net salary in a bond, and we will accommodate that. Um, in the, that with persons, 36,000 net income would mean a person earning about less than 3,000 a month. The next band is between 36 and 50,000. That is a person earning between 3,000 and 4,166 dollars a month that person will get 93% of their salary in cash and 7% in a bond. If they, if they want. You can opt in to say whether I don't want no, the bond, I, I need my cash now. It's my money, I want it right now, I got some expenses. And immediately before you get it on payday, that bond will be converted into cash and they will get it in their bank account. So they work with the same amount. And, and I won't go through the mechanism what happens so now, but that is how it will work. They may say I want more. For some reason, I want more than 7%, and there you will accommodate that also. Now, and then the other band is between 50,000 and 100,000, which is $4,166 and $8,133 um, a month. They, they will get 88% of their salary in cash and 12% in a bond. Again, they may opt in for more, less, none, that will be accommodated. In other words, they, they will get convert and say in their bank account before the time, on the, before pay there. And finally, the last band, over 100,000 per year, which is um, $8,133 per month, be 70%, 83% in cash, and 17% in a bond. And they can, again, opt in or out for more than that. Now, for, I know many economists are within earshot of my voice will, will try to analyze, but how is that helping? Let me reiterate it one more time. Last year, for example, on the central government alone, our wage bill was eight million, eight hundred million and six, eight hundred and six million. That is cash. Our fiscal accounts are recorded as cash. So, if everybody without shedding employment, get me no employment shed. If we pay that again this year, we expect a similar amount in cash. However, if I, if we are able to pay a worker ninety percent of that in cash and ten percent in bond. Because the fiscal is recorded on a cash basis, the 90% is recorded as a wage bill, the 10% is recorded as a debt. This means I have that extra 10% um, uh, percent space because I put it as debt. Now I have it, I have it, it's not expensive, that I can take it and channel it into productive activities that will help me stimulate growth, which is good because then I can mop up employment and our friends and neighbors get work. So that's how I'm saving on your fiscal. And I'm avoiding another question too, because a person might say, why not let the private sector just buy? It's not because private sector buying 
It's good, but not for this purpose because government don't pay private sector wages. So we don't save anything by private sector paying. The private sector can pay a role by if a worker wants to sell his bond. And a senior transaction will happen through the central bank. Credit unions, corporates, individuals with access can go ahead and buy that. So that being said, let me just go and show one, two examples, and then, oh my gosh. I lose my PowerPoint for that, but okay. Just bear me. So in terms of examples, and, um, I, and by the way, it is why we call it the Barbados Optional Safety Scheme, because workers can choose to have the, all their money in cash, or a larger proportion in bond that we have cal com contemplated, a smaller proportion, any amount. Because at any day, what matters is how we are recording on fiscal. So it's truly optional. And we are we have working with Central Bank and our partners to make sure that even after you get the bond, it can easily be traded. Now let me give you an example of why this is a really a win-win for everyone. If assume a person net take home pay is $3,397.09, because that person annually was about 48. Um, that means that that person will get 93% of their income in cash and the other 7%. That means 237% in bonds and 93% in cash. So from the government treasury, they will get a check for 93 in their account, and they have a bond that is at the central bank. Before payday, they, they could indicate, I don't want the bond. And by payday, they will see in their account, the cash central bank would immediately convert it into cash by finding a buyer, by buyer which is already available, and and central bank is about to drop, and they have their cash. They may want more, they may want less, so it's fully convertible. But what I want to point out is the savings component of it. That person will have saved 